Hi subscribers, what's up? It's me, Vivs from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about certain APIs that relate to XML DOM parsing. First, we are gonna take a look at some methods and some interfaces quickly, and then we are gonna take a look at some code as how to parse. So let's get started. So first, we talk about the document interface. It has certain methods like get document element. Now, did I tell you the document interface is the most important one because this method get document element is going to return the root element inside your XML document. Now it has other methods like get elements by tag name. You can get all the other elements given a tag. Then there's the element interface which is which comes next over here. It has methods like get attributes. You can return or you can retrieve a list of attributes that a particular element has. You can get attribute by a particular name of that attribute. You can get elements by tag name again. You can get a node list of elements. Now, if you're looking at this named node map and node list, and if you're wondering what type of class are they, don't worry about it. We will take a look at them shortly. There's the get tag name that will give you the element by tag name. Then there's the ATTR, which is the attribute interface itself. For any attribute, you can get its name by calling get name. And you can get its value by calling get value. Then there's the node interface, which has again get attributes method. Then there is your get child nodes, which returns the list of children this node may have. And there's a get node name, which is gonna give you the node name of this particular node. So you get node value, return the value of that node, get node type. Now there are different type of nodes out there, and we'll take a look at them shortly. Now enough with the APIs and enough with the methods and classes. Now let's take a look at how we process the document element. If you remember in the previous video, we talked about the document builder factory and using that we created a document builder and using that we had a document. Now here, let's take a look at that further. So when you say document dot get document element, this is gonna give you the root element inside your XML document. So that root element's name can be retrieved by saying root element dot get tag name. For example, if it's catalog, which is the root element of your XML document, then string root name is gonna contain the value catalog. Now there is the method called has attributes that will check if this element has attributes or not. And based on the fact whether it has attributes or not, you're welcome to call get attributes that will return or retrieve the list of attributes. So if root element dot has attributes, I can say something like this root element dot get attributes. Now what this returns is a named node map. Now we will take a look at how to process this named node map. Now let's take a look at that. So get attributes will return a no named node map of attributes. The named node map contains a method called get node length, which returns the number of attributes that have been retrieved. And you can get each attribute with this method called item and give int where if you say zero it's gonna give you the first attribute where you say one it's gonna give you the second attribute and so on let's take a look at that for i is zero i less than attributes dot get length i plus plus you can directly say attribute attr just type cast it over here to attr attributes dot item of i so as you guys can see in the previous slide where i just showed you that root element dot get attributes and this contained our known name map inside the attributes here I'm simply iterating over that attributes and I'm getting each attribute outside it. And then of course I can print my log that log dot d over here by saying attribute dot get name and attribute dot get value. So that is one simple way that you guys can process attributes. Now let's take a look at processing child nodes. Now if the root element has child nodes, then they can be again retrieved with the get child nodes method over there. First, you gotta check if it has children or not by using the has child nodes. So let's take a look at that. If root element dot has child nodes, then only we process by saying root element dot get child nodes. Now this is gonna return us a node list. So again, we can process through the node list by saying for i zero i less than node list dot length i plus plus node list dot item of i, which means child at position zero, child at position one. They're all gonna get stored inside a new node object over here. On the left and using the methods that we earlier talked about that belong to the interface node we can process the items contained it and so on and so forth now let's talk about node types now there are different types of nodes if you guys are not aware of it if you see this XML document structure I can show you some examples right here 
there's this element node this is a text node which says my title this only contains text and nothing else so based on that if a node is of type element then a node object may be cast to element now most of them are element nodes out there the root element this that and the other ones there are text nodes out there so you can get the type of a particular node by saying get node type now this is going to give you a whole list of values element node attribute node is it a text node is the C data section node? If you remember, XML documents sometimes have C data sections inside them. Identity reference, entity node, processing instruction, comment node, document node, document type node, document fragment node. There's a whole list of node types, but don't worry about these so much. What you gotta remember is the element node, and the text node, and the attribute node. That is sufficient for most of the cases. You won't even need the rest of them. So, further. There's of course there's a notation node oops I missed that one too so issues with DOM parsing let's take a look at that first of all the entire document needs to be loaded inside memory before you can start working with it now if it's a small document that's fine but if it's a huge document then there's gonna be big trouble in that case now document nodes can be accessed randomly of course that's a good thing about it then of course it's fast and flexible but parsing the entire document can reduce the efficiency like if you're downloading something in MBs or GBs then your Android device is definitely gonna run out of memory or something is gonna go wrong when you're gonna parse it with the DOM parsing and this is one of the reasons why DOM parsing is not used still uh, in Android at least it's not used but I will be talking about this example in the next video when we start working with a real example in Eclipse so however the DOM parsing approach that we saw right now is the best approach if you want to modify the XML document or if you want to go to random places within the document because the entire document structure has been created in memory and you know exactly where you can go and how you can reach so that is one of the things out there so in the next video I'm gonna go to Eclipse and I'm gonna start working with a simple example to demonstrate how DOM parsing and all these rotten methods and interfaces work together in the meantime, if you guys do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to Slide Nerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Again, if you're not clear with something, don't worry about it. An example always makes things better. Have a nice day.